This is Popper. She likes The Bachelor. She likes to watch all the women bark at each other. Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to my desk. It's been a while since we've been here, so you know, we're just gonna have something interesting to talk about today. I have a confession. I love The Bachelor franchise. And you know what? It's okay. It is garbage reality TV, and everyone needs a show that's just gonna kill their brain cells. And The Bachelor is it for me. There are a lot of opinions going around about this year's season. And I just wanted to address those opinions with my opinions and then also talk about some theories that have been going around. So if you haven't seen the Peter the Pilot season of The Bachelor, then you should probably stop the video because I'm just gonna go into it all. And I am up to date and it was just the, the fantasy suite weekend or whatever week, whatever it is. And I am just gonna go through it all. Also, if you haven't seen Hannah B's season of The Bachelorette, then you should probably stop there too because I'm gonna give that away because I love Hannah B and I think she's great and we'll get into that later. So first off, I would like to talk about a popular opinion that most people have of Peter the pilot. During Hannah Brown's season, of The Bachelorette. Peter was one of the top three, I guess technically because she got rid of Luke P, but he was top four-ish because she had four fantasy suites rather than three, but Luke P got left. Are you trying to jump out? Okay. So, I need to back up. I need to, I need to get comfortable for this conversation. Luke P got eliminated, there were three left, Peter Weber was one of them, but then he got sent home. I was a huge Peter the Pilot fan. I felt like I knew him. I felt like Hannah Brown was making the worst decision ever, sending him home. Jed was trash. Tyler was good, but then he ended up being trash also. But Peter, he was loyal. He was like a happy little puppy with Hannah Brown. And she should have stayed with him because he was just so sweet and so loving and so caring. And I know he didn't like tell her he loved her as quickly as the other ones. Hannah Brown messed up. She should have picked Peter. And you know what? She regrets it. She even said that at the beginning of Peter's season of The Bachelor. She came back and was like, you know what, Peter? I think about it every day if I would have just chosen you or even if I would have asked you out on a date. I'm, ex I'm expanding here. But besides the point, Peter before his Bachelor season loved him. He was great. I was so excited to have him as The Bachelor because I was like, man, he is so caring and wonderful. But now that he is The Bachelor, completely different opinion. I think he is too caught up in all of the drama of the girls. I do have a theory though that that's because Hannah Brown didn't listen to her men on Luke P. But can we just note that Luke P was probably the best reality television that I have ever seen. He was the best person to just make a villain out of. And Luke P, kudos to you. You blew that out of the water. You get the award for best reality TV star. But that's a whole side tangent. We can have a whole nother video just on Luke P and all of his crazy antics. Peter kind of stayed out of it from what they showed. Peter stayed out of the whole conversations with Luke P and Hannah Brown and was like, you know what? I'm just gonna focus on my relationship with Hannah Brown. But what does he do during his season? He listens to all the girls' drama. I think that's because since Hannah didn't listen to them, like Peter and the other boys about Luke P, that he feels the need to make sure that he covers all of his bases with the girls. I could be wrong. I could be right. I don't know. But I really do think that has hurt his ability to find love. That's my thoughts on Peter. I loved him at the beginning of when we first met him. And then as the season has gone on, I've just been like, come on, Peter. 
You can do so much better. But for some odd reason, he can't hear me through the television. So I don't know why he keeps choosing these girls when they're all not so good. And why that he keeps listening to all the drama. It's like, I keep telling him don't do it, but he keeps not listening. Anyways, going on to the opinions of my opinions of all the drama. I know that there are lots of opinions from lots of people saying that this whole season is filled with way too much drama from the women. Let's be clear on this. We're watching a reality TV show where it gets all of its money from people watching other people's drama. Am I crazy? Of course it's gonna be drama filled. And you know those producers are just sitting there being like, oh my God, you know, Madison called you a slut and I think you should go confront her about it. And then Madison goes over stopping. Oh my God, why did you call me that? And they're just there to cause drama, which I do not condone women taking down other women. That's not okay. We should all support each other and lift each other up. But for the sake of this conversation, for the sake of The Bachelor, they need drama or else it's gonna be super boring like Ari's season of The Bachelor. It was super boring until the very end when he left Becca for Lauren. And let's be clear, Lauren was a little boring, but that's fine. But really sit and question yourself. If there wasn't drama, would you watch? You know, every season they're trying to one-up themselves. They're like, you know, last season they said that the finale of The Bachelor was the most dramatic in history of all time, of all Bachelor history. So you know they're just trying to one-up it. So why are people so mad at the fact that there's so much drama from the girls? I don't know if you've ever seen the show Unreal. I think it's on Hulu. It used to be on Lifetime, which you know if it's on Lifetime, it's a really good show. But Unreal is basically, it's not a reality TV show, but it's a show based around producing a show like The Bachelor. And it was actually written by someone that worked on The Bachelor set. So you kind of get the feeling and idea of what goes on behind the scenes. And of course, it's even more dramatic than what happens on The Bachelor. I'm not gonna give anything away, but just know that it is an extremely good show and I highly recommend it. With that being said, The Bachelor franchise is all about drama. So why are you gonna be so upset when this show that is filled with drama has too much drama? Although, although I will say, there has been a lot of petty drama this season. Like, with the whole champagne gate. Like, come on, come on. I get that you're wanting to share this champagne bottle with Peter, your potential love of your life and future husband, but you know there's champagne bottles all around there and people could easily get confused. If you look back at the women that were chosen for The Bachelor, for, for Peter, they are all very different from what Hannah Brown was like, which I think was done on purpose, personally. The only person that I really thought had a chance was Madison. I don't know, the rest of them just seemed very blase to me. They didn't seem like they were actually in it to find a person. I think they were more in it to make a name for themselves than to really date Peter. No one that he's sent home, I was surprised by. And there hasn't really been a girl that I've truly connected with, that I was like really voting for and cheering on and being like, this is the person. I don't know if that's just because they focused a lot on either having flight attendants in there because they thought, oh, Peter's dad is a pilot and his mom is a flight attendant. And so of course Peter's gonna wanna marry someone that's a flight attendant or they focused on pageants again. And so, I don't know, or Southern women, it's it's beyond me, but I really don't think that he had his cream of the crop. You look at the three women that he has now, which by the time this video comes out, we're already gonna know who he sends home after the fantasy suites. But in regards to what we're talking about, he has Victoria F, Hannah Ann, and then Madison. 
You look at those three women, they are all very different, very different women. There's Victoria F who's extremely insecure in herself, which is fine. A lot of women are insecure with themselves, but you go on the show knowing that you're gonna be shown to the entire world. So you have to have some confidence in yourself, right? She's the one that's a little like red flags all over the place. She's red, 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 red flags. I've never seen so many more red flags in my entire life, but she's filled with them. It's kind of like, not as dramatic. It's kind of like, it's Peter's equivalent of Luke P for Hannah Brown. Victoria F, because Luke P was just like Mr. Red Flag, and then Victoria F is Miss Red Flag. They should get together. That should be on Bachelor in Paradise. I will call up Chris Harrison and let him know. With that being said, we'll move on to Hannah Ann, which she's cute, she's fun, she's a model, but you don't really get much out of her. There's not much content charisma, communication, anything. You don't get a lot from her. She's just kind of there. And I do give her props and the fact that she basically told Peter, like, I am here for you. I am not here for any other reason. No matter what happens, I will be here for you, which was really sweet. And I think that's the most emotional that we've seen her. I think she's stuck around a while because Peter has a thing for Hannah's. Clearly. The last person would be Madison, and she's a very interesting story to me. So she's a virgin. She's saving herself for marriage, which kudos to her, especially in this time where a lot of women and men do not. Um, it shows a lot of self-control that she can and that she is really all about her morals and faith, and so that's good on her. The problem I have with it is that she has an expectation for someone that she's known for what, six weeks? That you know has slept with people before because hello, windmill, four times with Hannah Brown in the windmill, and you go on this show knowing this about this guy, knowing that if you make it to Fantasy Suites, there's a potential that he's gonna sleep with a bunch of other girls. And yes, I can understand that that could be really upsetting for you. However, you are on a reality TV show that bases its life around this. Like, the fact that one man will be seeing 20 plus girls and the potential that someone is going to end up sleeping with him. Whether it be one person, two people, three people, four people, 10 people, I don't know. But the fact that she has kept her faith kind of a secret and her morals and what She's promised for herself a secret until basically the beginning of the fantasy suites and doesn't even really tell him then. Because to me, that conversation wasn't really clear and what she was expecting from him because she basically then came back and said, no, that's not right for me to expect it for you, but I expect it for myself. And then later on, it's like, oh, I do expect it for you because I expect it for myself and you're gonna be my husband, so I have expectations. And if life has taught me anything, it's the fact that, yes, you can have expectations for yourself. You can have goals for yourself, but you can't put those expectations onto other people. There's just no way. You can talk about it, you can discuss it, you can do whatever. But unless you have a discussion with that person and y'all have decided on something together, there's no way that you can just be like, hey, let me tell you, I think you should be doing this and I'm getting mad at you because you didn't do that. Whatever, we'll see how it ends. Basically, Madison just left and was like, I'm, I'm not talking to you anymore, Peter, because it got upsetting. And basically Peter told her that he slept with someone or both of the other women. I mean, that's his prerogative if he wants to, you can't get mad about it, but you knew going into that week that there was the potential for that. And yeah, you can say that you probably told him, but he does have other relationships with other women and he's supposed to take your thoughts and opinion over his own thoughts and opinion when he's trying to make a decision of a lifetime? I don't know. It's just something to think about. I don't think there's a right or wrong way in any of this. And then finally, my last talking point is 
There's all these rumors and speculation and theories about how it's gonna end. And I like to do digging, I like to do snooping. What I have learned is that Peter's ending has not been spoiled yet. People are theorizing that he ends up with no one in the end. And I think there's potential for that. I think when the mom is saying, don't let her go, it's either about two people. One is Madison, because Madison is the only one that was spending time with his parents, one-on-one -on -one time with his parents prior to this. So either Madison sticks around after the rose ceremony for the final three to go to the final two, Madison moves on, the mom gets to hang out with Madison again. So that's her second time hanging out with her and she's like, oh my God, I love Madison. Don't let her go. And Peter's like, okay, like something comes up. He's like, oh, I can't propose to Madison right now. And then, you wanna? Can't propose to Madison right now. And then goes home after all of the whole bachelor season and is reflecting with his parents. And then that's when the mom is like, I know you love her still and you messed up, but don't let her go. Right, Piper? My second option would potentially be Hannah Brown. This is also me just like hoping and wishing and praying that that's what's going to happen because I think they should be together. And I think that is the only other person that Peter's mom would be crying over saying, don't let her go. Something else that I have heard, which is a really interesting thought because they keep saying that this ending is something you will not expect. So what's something that we might not expect? Oh, here's a theory. Peter falls in love with one of his producers. You heard me. Think about it. He's been around all the producers for The Bachelorette and you know they've been working with him for God only knows how long leading him up to The Bachelor. And then he spends extra time on The Bachelor with them it could happen. It would make for a very juicy ending to his story. Anyways, I've been wanting to do this rant for a really long time because this season has just got me all sorts of confused and messed up and interested and concerned. And I just got all the feelings, just have all of the feelings about this because I think I was so invested in Peter. That's it for my rant. I just really needed to get that off my chest and thanks for listening to it because you, never, you just never know what's gonna resonate with someone. So I figured I would let people know my opinions on the whole thing. But if you like this video, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. If you wanna see more videos about different reality TV shows and my thoughts on them, click that like button. And let me know your thoughts on any of my opinions. If you have the same opinion, if you don't, what, what do you think about it? Do you watch The Bachelor? Do you watch The Bachelorette? Do you watch Bachelor in Paradise? Which is definitely my favorite out of all of them. Bachelor in Paradise, great. It's been great hanging out today. We'll have some more random thoughts like this coming soon. And so I will see you all next time. Bye. Say goodbye, Pepper. We're ending the video. Bye-bye.